This week on Jim Wright Live, we interview Dr. Matt Angove of Elite Fuel to learn about what they're doing to help raise the bar on quality in the supplement game. But before we get into that, I'd like to give a warm thank you to SiteRight.io as our official sponsor for this show. Every gym owner deserves a great website. Now there is no excuse not to have one. Upgrade your online presence by heading over to SiteRight.io today. Also, for those of you listening to this via podcast, if you aren't already a member of the network, our free private Facebook group for gym owners, you are missing out. Without almost, with almost 1,800 motivated gym owners in there, along with our team of growth specialists, you will find tons of great conversations, live weekly Q&A sessions with yours truly, the video version of these episodes, as well as step-by-step how-tos of some of the most effective strategies out there for gym owners today. Simply go to vip.gymright.com to get access right away. By the way, this will also get you our free sales and marketing planner for those of you who don't have it yet. So head on over, join the network today. It's totally free. All right, let's get this show on the road. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Jim Wright Live. I am your host, Marcus Gerzi, and this week we welcome to the show Dr. Matt Ango, co-founder of Elite Fuel. Now, I met Matt and his team at the Iron and Mortar Summit in Portland last week and was really impressed with what they had to say about the industry and how they are working to raise the bar on quality of what is out in the marketplace. So I'm excited to have Matt on today. So without further ado, Dr. Matt Ango, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Marcus. Great to be here. Awesome, man. Yeah, excited to have you on. Um, you guys are doing some really good work. Um, you know, uh, today we're going to be learning all about, you know, what you guys are doing differently than a lot of other supplement manufacturers out there. Um, and uh, I'm excited to get into that stuff because we had some pretty nerdy conversations at the Iron and Mortar Summit. Um, uh, my partner, uh, Jessica, and I were both really impressed with what you guys had to say and just where you guys were coming from and the, the level of, of, of research and effort that's going into what you guys are doing. So uh, I thought it would be really interesting to share that here on the network. Um, so before we get into that, though, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you even got into the supplement business. Yeah, so I was a practicing doc about two years into practice, and uh, I actually had a, a gym owner, cross the gym owner, came in, new patient, and uh, he was just jacked. I was like, geez, what are you doing, man? Because uh, I was into fitness, but I, I wasn't doing cross at that point, and uh, his wife had just finished second uh, at the CrossFit Games a uh, year earlier, and uh, he was really, really into health, and he was what he wanted he was like, you know, asking for things for himself personally because he was a regionals athlete and he wanted to go to the next level. Um, and so I wrote him out this big old plan of what he should do. It was like 10 different supplements, seven different companies, like four, $400 a month. And uh, he had a big family. He's a firefighter. He's, and he came back and said, man, I, just, I can't do that. I want to do all this stuff, but I can't do that. I, was just, I don't have that in my budget. Not to mention, I just don't want to. This is just way too complicated. So... Uh, I, then his buddy came in, he's also a firefighter, and he had just been to the CrossFit Games as, in, as an individual athlete. And these are my, this is my first introduction to CrossFit is these two just jacked guys that are, you know, games athletes. And uh, he wanted to base the same thing. These guys are like grass fed everything, like they guard, have gardens and all this kind of stuff and big families. And they, so they wanted basically stuff that just wasn't going to hurt him, but could give him a little bit of an edge um, in the pr- performance arena. So then I happened to go to my buddy's. This one, this one firefighter's birthday party for his daughter and the uh, gym owner comes up to me and says, "Hey, what are you gonna do this or not? We need, we need something. I, I want, I want something, but I don't want to do these four hundred dollars a month." So that's when we came out actually with the, the original product. I'd actually and then medical medical school. I was really into nutrition and biochemistry, and so I'd actually written up a little formula, thinking for myself, because um, I was very active. I played college basketball, um, but I. I would never take any of this stuff because one, I couldn't handle caffeine. It would just make me feel terrible. Um, and <laughs> two, I'm just, I'm, a, I'm just light caffeine, even, you know, one shots like that's, that's enough for like two days for me. But, um, after then, so yeah, I went, I talked to a bunch of people. I knew some specialists in the raw, raw products industry to get some, uh, kind of insider stuff on where to get product, where to get the, the raw product that was legitimate. Um, and then, uh, I'd already known a lot of manufacturers because I worked with 
probably a hundred different supplement companies just in my practice with my patients. Um, and so that just, uh, you know, accelerated everything. Uh, and then my dad, he's all, he, so he competed, competed in the 60 plus division for the CrossFit games. He's like got second, fifth, second, third, second, um, like the last five, five years. But, uh, wow. I, I wanted to make, I wanted to have him, give him something to, to propel him. Cause especially, you know, as you're aging 60 plus, you like need every, <laughs> right. um, all the help you can get recovery that you can get to make things happen for yourself. So that's kind of what propelled me. I wanted it to do it already, but I basically didn't have an avenue or like, you know, a group of people that were, I thought actually would want what I thought was the best thing for them. Um, but then these guys just yeah, showed up on my doorstep. So it was pretty sweet. Yeah. That's uh that's interesting, man. I didn't, I didn't realize that that's how you kind of fell into it. I mean, that's kind of the, the legit, I mean, the, the, the story we've heard a million times of, you know, you have someone who, who knows, you know, ha has an edge in, in a certain area and someone keep, you keep getting more demand for something, right? You notice the need right. in the marketplace right. and it just keeps coming at you and you realize like, wait a minute, I can, I might actually be able to do something about it. Right. So, so you guys created your initial product. Um, what was that by the way? I saw a bunch of different uh, so things. It was, when... Their initial product was called elite fuel. Okay. This one, one flagship product. It's now that product has been morphed as science changes mm -hmm. and we get better and better about five times now. And it's called the fuel. Um, it's our base, it's our, our pre-workout product, stimulant free and all that, that kind of thing. Um, and, uh, so yeah, one thing I want to mention on that whole, so I, I talk about, we talk about stimulant free all the time. And the reason being is that, uh, there was a study in 2017 that showed that when you had caffeine, caffeine, caffeine and hydros, which is like caffeine, um, that's in most pre-workouts or, you know, bang drinks or Red Bulls or all, all those they're from those special companies. Um, yeah. The uh, when we take it in that form, it actually can shorten our telomeres, and telomeres are basically the caps that sit on top of our DNA. So the longer your telomeres are, the less risk you have of essentially any disease of, of chronic nature. Um, also, general just like acute illness from your immune system is more robust if your telomeres are longer. So you know, people are putting out all this energy. They're showing up at the gym, crushing themselves, trying to get stronger, stay healthier. You know, they maybe are changing their diet now. They're getting more more meat and vegetables, fruit, nuts, seeds, trying to stay away from all the processed grains, less fast food, all this kind of stuff. You know, and then they're, which would in itself keep our telomeres longer. Uh, exercise lengthens our telomeres or, or can keep them at, at a longer length. But then we show up and, you know, we go before we actually, you know, pound some pink flavored um, or, or pink colored <laughs> cherry juice, um, you know, that's loaded with 300 milligrams of caffeine or 500 milligrams of caffeine, just, you know, caffeine by itself, um, as opposed to, which I would say that's like super expensive caffeine, right? That's really expensive caffeine. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, if you get a nice cup of coffee, some black tea, green tea, oolong tea, matcha, whatever, um, that actually does not shorten your telomeres. So when the caffeine is housed in its natural form, in mm -hmm. its whole foods form, it actually lengthens telomeres, which is what we want. We want the, the caps on our DNA to be really robust and big because that protects our body from disease and dysfunction and cancer and um, the kind of whole aging process. Whereas if they're short and stubby, like happens with lots and lots of caffeine intake, and these, this study is amazing because it, it it takes out all the other variables, and the only thing that was left, left that's left over is this, this caffeine. Um, mm -hmm. And this is these, these human studies, so it's uh, it's pretty pretty crazy. But uh, so yeah, that was one of our big, the big reasons why I was like, man, well, in this whole, you know, drain the adrenals, we're already drinking enough coffee, green tea, black tea, right? Throughout the day for most of us. Um, do we really need another 300 milligrams of just straight up caffeine into our system? Um, you know, that's not authentic energy. It's just getting rid of this little thing called adenosine in our brain that says, hey, let's not go to sleep. Let's turn, every let's turn everything back on. Let's, let's put that fight or flight response in motion. Uh, so what if we just actually gave the body true authentic energy, you know, what it actually needs to create ATP, which I'm sure everybody out there has heard that word a, a million times, uh, because that is, that is our fuel. That is what enables our muscle tissues, our brain, our heart, nervous system, all of it to actually do something. You know, even now we're, we're creating mass amounts of ATP, just doing, doing this, uh, this talk here. So, um, Let's, let's create authentic energy. That was that was really the, the impetus behind that that first product of fuel now. So 
So, I mean, that's pretty interesting what you just said about caffeine. And uh, I feel like the, the kind of the message here was, you know, we, we do all this work, you know, to, to come into the gym, you know, three, four, five, six days a week, um, you know, to, to be healthy. We, we right. improve our diet by, you know, eating more whole foods and eating less crap uh, to, you know, to improve our health again. Yeah. Yet, you know, we're doing all this work and then you are using cheap supplements or I mean, made with crap or with things that aren't really helping you and are actually mm -hmm. hurting you uh, right. when it comes to making you healthy. It may give you a gain. It may give you a benefit maybe for that workout or even just as far right. as your performance gains go, but you're actually, it's very unhealthy what you're doing, right? Right. And so, yeah. and, and that's something for me as a gym owner too, that was always my beef with a lot of the products that were out in the marketplace, which is why we carried so few a product, mm -hmm. um, was because, you know, our whole message at Active was about actually pe people living a longer, healthier, more fulfilling life. We put a yeah. huge emphasis on, you know, nutrition and teaching people how to eat correctly um, and, you know, oh. unlearning a lot of these, these lifelong habits and misconceptions around diet and around exercise. And then they go to GNC, they drop 150 bucks on a bunch of garbage and you see them shaking up, like you said, their, their cherry flavored, you know, chemical mix pre-workout, then another version of that post-workout. And then they're doing some more stuff in the morning and in the evenings. And it's like, dude, like all that good you're doing, you're kind of undoing it all again with all this right. stuff that you're doing, which is, it sounds like kind of was what your aha was and said, okay, well, let's address that and start creating some better products. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Okay, and people, it's good. Uh, no, I was just gonna say, uh, you know, there's a, a one of your main products, which is your goat protein, which was what you guys were featuring. Um, or I'm not sure if it was necessarily featured. I just noticed it was being talked about a lot because it's a little unorthodox compared to what most of us are used to in the space. Um, it seems to be, you know, I guess tell us why why goat why goat protein. Why is it better or why do you guys do it? And, you know, I guess why should someone consider taking that as an athlete or as a gym owner sure. stocking that versus maybe some of the other stuff that's out there? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, one one thing to consider as just a gym owner, um, if you're going to, so every, everything's a market, right? You know, a gym owner is going to want to actually make something off of the product they're selling, right? Of course. They're going to want to, otherwise you got, you got the GNC, you got all the health food stores around you, mm -hmm. you got, you know, Fred Meyer, you got all these Costco, whatever, they're all selling basically the exact same. So WP40, that's a whey protein for, that's like the standard protein that literally, I mean, 99 out of 100 companies are carrying WP40 as the, the base, this pro, whey protein isolate from, from cows. So it's, you know, it's super expensive and uh, we create, we create a lot of it um, in America and around the world. Uh, so what, what can help, you know, offset that? Sure. I could have gotten like grass fed whey protein from New Zealand, but you know, just like the carbon footprint from that's kind of insane. And, you know, it's still from cows. And so my patient population, so I don't see just athletes. I see, you know, diabetes, cancer, you know, everything pretty much kids on up to 80 year olds. Um, a massive amount of them are sensitive to cows, you know, the casing of the cow, the lactose in the cow, the weight in the cow, um, even if it is the cleanest New Zealand based, you know, whey protein concentrate. So I, I personally, I was like, you know, I'm not taking any protein. I want to take protein, but, uh, I, I don't want to take any of these, even though these are like pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical grade companies. I'm, I'm, I could get protein from, um, at a pretty good price. I don't even want to take them. So I happened to move my practice, um, from up in Seattle down to just between Seattle and Portland. And I was just out in, walking through town and I ran into a friend of mine from way back at Eastwood basketball with like 15 years ago. And he, his, his family has a goat farm that they've had for like seven years, grass fed, um, no antibiotics, no hormones, you know, nothing just like perfect. Uh, and I was like, man, dude, can I, we gotta get, can I get weight? Can I get some, can I get make whey protein from your goats? Cause sheeps, sheep, camels, cows, goats, they all have that same casein, whey, lactose, you know, the same words, mm -hmm. but structurally the proteins are actually different. So even though the words are the same, the activity in the human body is different. 
And so talked to them and we got it all set up. Um, they have some crazy awesome technology um, for drying the, uh, the whey protein or the, the, the milk to get the whey so that you can um, uh, not have to add, add a bunch of heat to it and, and, and uh, denature any of the enzymes or the, we call the immunoglobulins, which are like the, the, uh, the immune factors and really like growth factors within in the milk itself. Um, so that's how it came about. And the big, the big difference between, you know, somebody says, I got cow whey, I got dairy, I got um, goat whey over here is, so cow whey and why we call it hyperallergenic, meaning it is more likely to cause allergies. This isn't me just saying this, this is standard in science. Cow is considered hyperallergenic. Goat is considered hypo, meaning really low allergy potential. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't, you could be potentially allergic to anything, but <laughs> chances are you're not gonna be allergic to goat. Um, and you're likely to be allergic to cow at some point. So when you intake, say, whey protein concentrate from cows, from these grass-fed New Zealand cows, it forms this hard curry-like substance in your stomach, which um, is very hard to digest, kind of nicks along the small intestinal lining, um, potentiates potentially leaky gut and, and a lot of um, uh, uh, changes in your microbiome, which is basically the, the makeup of your gut bacteria. And the balance there. Whereas when you ingest goat whey, it actually forms this really soft, fluffy bolus um, in your stomach, which doesn't have any of this uh, deranging effects on your microflora, which is amazing. And it's why that all kinds of people um, take this active whey goat protein and don't have any issues. And yet, you know, they've taken, they stopped taking whey protein. Maybe they went to a vegetarian protein for a while because they were having so much gas, bloating, even nausea. I had one mm -hmm. buddy um, who actually, his throat would feel like it would start closing up. He was very allergic to the cow. Um, so I sent him a couple packets of the goat just to try. And you know what? Zero issue. So it can be kind of hard for people to understand. And I've thought about it from a, a marketing logistics standpoint. Like, what would you do? How do you differentiate? Because the words are the same, right? I can't change, you know, this is, this says whey protein cow, this is goat whey over here, but structurally they're different. And that makes it very, very different on how it affects the human body. And, uh, you know, there's a study, this isn't on my product, but this is on goat whey protein concentrate, which is what our product is made out of, mm -hmm. um, showing that in Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, which are massive inflammatory disease of the bowels, you know, people get bleeding out of their bowels, just massive pain, pain and infections. Some people end up getting surgeries to resect some of the bowels. So it was actually shown that goat whey protein concentrate would decrease all these inflammatory markers like interleukin-6, interleukin-10 that proliferate in these conditions. So if you can shut those inflammatory markers down, you slow that those pathways down, you're essentially reversing the condition, which is pretty fantastic, right? Yeah. Um, and that's just from, you know, whey protein, uh, specifically goat whey protein. So it's, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're going to, I always tell people, you know, you don't have to take protein. Not, you know, America, generally speaking, there's, you can eat enough meat, you can eat, you know, to get enough protein. We're not going to be just protein deficient like crazy, unless maybe you're, uh, you're pregnant or something, or, you know, you're 70, 80 years old and just literally not eating enough calories, but you don't have to get protein. Protein is a, um, like, like a delicacy, you know, that opportunity to take protein. That's, this is like performance, luxury um, living. Make bit, pleasure, make life a little bit easier, that kind of thing. Um, so why would you put something in your body that is not just awesome? You know, when you're, when you're going to put protein in your body, why would, you know, this isn't something you have to literally do. This is something you're, we're choosing to do, right? We're choosing to put protein in our body to, you know, get a little extra gain, maybe, you know, fill out a smoothie, uh, recover a little faster, get a little more protein synthesis going to stimulate muscle repair after workouts. So be very picky, be very choosy. I mean, it's, it's not, it's just not a good idea to go get the, the cheapest thing you can find at Costco when they got two for one. Um, I mean, maybe it's Costco's carrying something awesome now um, on the protein line or, you know, your, whatever your, your GNC, you walk in there, you just get, okay, you know, this is 30, 60% off today, $10 for, you know, 30 servings or whatever of 20 grams a day. This protein, I mean, protein literally, as we talked about, it's the building, it, it forms the building blocks of every single structure in our entire body, which is why people will say, you know, or science says, pea protein may not be the ultimate source because it's not complete, right? A vegetable protein is not complete. It doesn't have an adequate ratio of essential amino acids, 
to build our body on an ongoing basis. Whereas whey protein from any source um, has the ultimate essential amino acid ratio to build, you know, brain tissue, heart tissue, liver tissue, um, muscle tissue, bone tissue, tendon tissue, ligament, you know, everything that, that the body can take those amino acids within whey protein and it can utilize those to build all your, all your other essential amino acids um, and, and build all your tissues. So the, bi the biggest difference I think for a gym owner, say like, why would I, you know, carry goat whey or why would I want that is think you already have a big, big population one that's taking protein. I mean, it's hard to find something that's not taking protein these days, even like just, you know, like a 45 year old woman, just, you know, homemaker, not, you know, she's not like trying to pound, pound weights, just wants to be in shape. And she comes to the office, she takes protein every single day. Uh, you know, there's, mm -hmm. so virtually there's, it's hard to find someone that's not taking protein. Um, but we want to be able to offer them something that actually is going to build their body up. You know, so your, your clients have probably heard a lot about glutathione. Glutathione is our master antioxidant, every cell in our entire body. So whey protein is very high, especially goat whey protein is very high in something called cysteine. And that, that amino acid cysteine is the rate limiting step for glutathione production. So as you raise cysteine, which there's actually multiple studies in Canada on this, um, glutathione will go up. If glutathione goes up, every cell in your body is happy now because they can perform all the detoxification me mechanisms they need to perform. They can perform all the anti-inflammatory mechanisms. Um, and in and of itself is this, this big time antioxidant, which back to that whole telomere picture, you know, if our telomeres are longer, mm -hmm. right. we live longer, dysfunction stays away and uh, disease is really hard to come upon us. So. Wow, that was really, really informative. I did not know a lot of that. Um, and, you know, I mean, goat protein, I mean, at, at the surface, right? We're just so used to, we've always seen, you know, it's it's a cow-based whey protein. Every product right. out there has been made of it. Hey, it's proven, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, all the all these kinds of thoughts that that I think a lot of us may initially have and be like, well, this is this is new. I think of a, you know, I think of a cow, I think of like this big, strong animal versus, you know, this little goat, um, right. you know, you'd think like, well, is this going to affect my, my gains at all? You know, but after hearing a lot of that, I mean, at the end of the day, at least for a lot of us, uh, particularly us who've been doing this for a while and are no longer just trying to win the competition, um, on as cheap of a budget as possible and are more interested in, you know, the quality of life and the health benefits of what I do with my training and my nutrition. Um, sure. I mean, it makes a whole lot of sense to, you know, put that in there. I mean, we pay premiums for organic and grass fed and, you know, we're, we're already trying to buy, uh, the better foods and the better things right. we're paying for the better kind of training and, and, and all of this stuff. I mean, why would we not pay the same thing? And it's not like it's a whole bunch more. It's not like you're paying some crazy premium for this growth protein. Oh, no. It's just a better protein. And I don't think it's actually any more expensive than the other stuff. Right. Is that accurate? Right. Oh yeah. No, I mean, it's not, yeah, it's not more expensive. It's just, uh, you know, the thing with the reason there's cow, so much cow protein is because their cows are huge, right? A single mm -hmm. cow is going to produce like 20 times what a, a single goat will. Um, but so if you, have, you gotta have a lot of goats and, uh, a lot of pasture, um, to, to keep them, you know, grass fed year round, pasture raised, all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the big thing is it's, it, it would be hard for goats to ever completely take over the dairy or the, or the cow, uh, whey protein industry. Cause there's literally just not so many goats. There's not enough of them. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, they can't produce, produce enough milk. Um, especially if not giving them any hormones or anything like that. So, um, okay. So then, and just to kind of clarify there, as far as like performance gains and anything like that, there is no drawback or anything is there any drawback or any like less performance with the the goat based protein than say the the cow based way oh no i mean if anything there would be more like i was saying if you have a the the big problem about something that's hyperallergenic or causes distress within our gastrointestinal tract mm -hmm. isn't so much i have this symptom of gas now so a gas bloating in our in our digestive tract means something's off right that's not a normal occurrence that's not, it's not just supposed to be like that. It means there's extra fermentation happening. It means that, uh, you know, floor is actually changing, you know, yeast may be changing. So for instance, back in, uh, before Rio de Janeiro, when the limits were there, there was a study done in US Olympic athletes to see, you know, the effect. So we train a lot, like we do one hardcore high intensity interval training. We end up with leaky gut. 
So leaky gut is basically where the junctions between our cells, these gap junctions, spread off part a little bit, and larger boluses of uh, undigested food substances make their way in our bloodstream, which causes an immune response, which increases our core body temperature. So the reason they were doing this study on these Olympic athletes is saying, okay, we want US Olympic, athlete, US Olympic athletes to crush it in Rio and give them every advantage possible. So if we um, can figure out a way to stop this leaky gut, to slow this down, then we can keep their core temperature a little bit lower. And by keeping their core temperature a little bit lower, you know, they can run faster, they can run longer, they can compete, you know, compete better. better. It's like, why? Um, so if we're putting something into our body that is, you know, mildly hypoallergenic, I, just, I give you a little gas, a little bloating, it just doesn't feel super good. Um, but you know, it's, say it's, I get it for 22 bucks or, <laughs> or you know, I, I get it cheap. I, I just kind of keep doing it. Um, I'm not saying it couldn't help your muscles grow, you know, the cow, that, that'd be, there's, there's a ridiculous amount of studies on whey protein, right? Um, or from cow-based whey protein, but, you know, we're, we're constantly bombarding and sorry, you're talking about performance. If our core temperature is always just a little bit higher, means we just, we can't do quite as much, you know, with our core temperature a little bit higher. Means, and then our recovery is going to be just a little bit slower. And every time we have this like one to 3% either decrease or increase in performance in the gym, and that just keeps on compounding on itself. Uh, one of my favorite right. books is called The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. And, you know, he just talks about all the ways, you know, these little itsy bitsy things just keep compounding. And next thing you know, if you had that 1%, which that's the thing about nutritional, the nutrition industry as a whole, most studies will give you about a 1% to 3% increase in performance. If you're taking and a literally natural thing, you know, non-steroidal thing, non-CERM, you know, literally a natural substance, beta alanine, creatine, magnesium, B12, folate, quercetin, any of these, you'll get whey protein, um, you'll get about a one to 3% increase in your performance um, over the long term. So if you 1% today, 1% tomorrow, 1% the next day, 1.5%, 2%, 2.5%, 1%, you know, you're getting these little advantages day after day. Well, then you show up, you know, this time next year, it's like, if I could stick my body next to myself from last year, having taken it versus not having taken it, you know, there's gonna be a different, huge difference there. Mm -hmm. Sure, you know, with from day to day, are you going to notice this massive difference? Yeah, probably not. But if you were, that because there was probably something spiked in there, or you know, like there, you, there was some, there was something extra uh, um, in there. So uh, that's yeah, I mean, that's a big thing we preach is like you want to put you can either get you know this this micro disadvantage time and time and time again, or you can get this micro advantage time and time and time and time again. So. Makes a lot of sense, man. Now you guys have a, a bunch of other products too. Um, it's something I think made just for CrossFitters specifically, like your uh, BCAs, I think, um, and that clean caffeine free pre workout you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, will you tell us a little bit about what makes those products different from the others in the market today? And, and again, like why would this, how would that matter to a gym owner? And I know we've kind of already kind of gone through the caffeine thing a little yeah, yeah. bit, but. Um, I just want to address it because, you, you know, going through your site and seeing what you guys had at the at the summit, uh, you guys had a pretty big swath of of options there. Uh, right. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, yeah, so I would say oh yeah, all those amino acids. So a lot of people do see amino acids. The first thing we think of is branch chain amino acids, right? Leucine, valine, you know, isoleucine. We think these, oh, okay, that's what I need. I'm going to work out. That's what I need. Crazy thing is more and more studies are coming out now showing that the BCAAs just by themselves um, may actually in the end become detrimental, especially at the doses people are taking them at. So one thing with this, uh, the aminos we have, so they're essential, BCAs are essential amino acids. So of course they're in there, but all the other essential amino acids are in there as well in a ratio that's been studied over 21 times to demonstrate actual growth of tissue, like actual growth of muscle tissue. Um, like people, geriatric patients laying in hospital beds, you give them um, this ratio of amino acids and you see they could actually grow, like their calf muscle, that's, they like, you know, tighten it down so it can't, you know, um, do any kind of contractions. And it, you could actually grow muscle tissue by giving this exact ratio of amino acids. So aminos, particularly, that's like 35 and plus population um, in a person's gym, because after about the age of 28, our anabolic window and our ability to cr cr basically stimulate protein synthesis with the protein we're ingesting. So protein synthesis enables us to build muscle mm -hmm. more and faster, recover faster, the more we can stimulate that. So 
just ingesting like 20, 30, 40 grams of protein will stimulate protein synthesis. However, with each passing decade, that stimulation becomes less and less and less. And you basically would have to eat more and more and more protein to get that same, same stimulation. So this amino acid ratio um, allows for the body to actually get that same stimulation. In fact, even, even more than just taking protein um, with each passing decade. So it's, it's basically like a product I made for my dad specifically um, as a 60 year old. Um, initially, that was what I was thinking was, was for him. But um, I mean, a lot of young people take it, but really it's for that 35 plus. I'm mm -hmm. 38. Uh, so I want to be able to keep getting what I'm getting in the gym as opposed to thinking I got to, you know, consume 350 grams of protein to continually get that same amount of recovery that I would uh, otherwise. Plus that just, that becomes, that's just not good. You know, we get too much nitrogen spill over if we're ingesting that much protein anyway. So, um, we do have a whole plethora of products, uh, but the, the general idea, you know, no, nobody needs to take every single product on our site, right? Nobody, no gym needs to carry every single product. You know what your gym, what your people need, what they want. Um, and you know, that's, you don't want to go into, you know, you don't want to create pressure for yourself by carrying a bunch of products that you don't really know what you're going to do with. Um, but the idea behind all of ours is that health is number one, performance is secondary. But when you increase health, if a health person's healthier, you feel more energized on a daily basis, your sleep's better. Uh, you know, you don't have digestive distress going on. You feel like mental clarity is better. Well, you're going to perform better and you're going to want it. You know, you're going to want to do this thing that's called fitness and uh, physical activity and, you know, getting stronger and all that kind of stuff. So we were trying to like, yeah, you know, 180, the, the standard nutritional industry and say, Hey, instead of just giving people buzzes to get them to go work out, we're gonna say, no, you're gonna feel so stinking good that you're, you're going to want to go work out now and, and you're going to be, you're going to be pumped about it. So. I love that, man. I think that's a really, uh, a beautiful place to come from and that you don't hear about often in the supplement space. Right. Um, it's about making money. It's about marketing. It's about buzzwords. Um, it's about shortcuts, silver bullets, you know, and, um, and I get it, you know, I mean, every industry has its, its thing, right. And, and right. how most people do it. Um, and again, I know, I know plenty of people who run supplement companies who, you know, are actively always trying to do a better job than the next. And, um, you know, and what yeah. you guys are doing is, uh, is really standing out, you know, especially making that, making health the first priority and not the performance gains because it inherently leads to performance gains if you're healthier, right? right. And, and longevity, right? We want, um, right. at least what we preach as far as, you know, what we hope for our gym owners is we want to, we want members for life. We want to create lifers, right. right? Those are the best clients to have. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we, we want to give them tools that are going to help complement that and not undo that, right? And, and create more problems right. for them two, three, four years down the road or however long it is. So, yeah. Awesome, man. Well, um, the final question for you today uh, is in one sentence, if you could give one piece of advice to a gym owner, what would it be? I mean, I think just, just what you're saying actually there is like, how can I create a, a lifelong member here? How can I create how this person that's came to the gym right now? How can I make it so that they have every opportunity to keep coming back? You know, they're not getting injured. They're recovering, recovering. Well, you know, what problem am I solving for this person on a daily basis? Um, because that, that's how you're going to grow your gym and keep your gym with ease. It's always easier to keep somebody right than to try to get a new client. 100%. Absolutely. Right. Too many people get too caught up on the just getting more new people in the door. When if you just kept those that you had longer and better, you wouldn't have to try so hard on the front end. Right. Awesome. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for coming on today and uh, sharing your wisdom with us. You know your stuff. It shows. And uh, you guys have got some great products, man. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to trying some myself. Um I want to see how much better I can feel because again, I'm also 38 um, yeah. or actually technically I won't be for another two days. Uh, okay. But um, in two days I will be 38 and I too want to feel a little bit better. So uh, I'll be checking your guys' stuff out for sure. Um, so where can people find more about you and or get in contact with you or Elite Fuel? Yeah, I mean at Elite Fuel pretty much for all social media stuff. Um, www.elitefuel.net and um my personal is Dr. Holness at Dr. Holness on all the stuff. That's where I do a lot more educational stuff for uh, general pop, general population and athletes. So, awesome. Man. Love to chat. Awesome, man. Thanks again for coming on today. Uh, and I want to thank all of you motivated gym owners out there for joining us today as well. Uh, if you're interested in learning how we can help you grow your gym, simply visit gymright.com to schedule your free strategy session with me today. 
Also, if you'd like to watch this show live, you can join the conversation right here in the network every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thanks again for your support. Now get out there and build something that matters. We'll see you guys again next week. Bye-bye.